Here's why I think the East Coast Don, the notorious B.I.G., is one of the most overrated MCs to grace the mic. And no disrespect to the man, R.I.P. to the notorious B.I.G. What's up, y'all? Capital P Entertainment over here, talking about hip hop and all types of entertainment media. So let's get into it. All right, I'm gonna talk to you guys about the past. Let's bring it back to 1994. All right, that was the year um, when Biggie Smalls dropped an album called "Ready to Die." Now this album came out, and I remember it came out on a humble like. Just out of nowhere, okay? Because I didn't even know who the guy really was too much until the album dropped. You know, because I wasn't really following him like that. You know, um, but his name rang bells all due out in New York. And he drops this album, Ready to Die. And the album, within itself, is pretty good. Okay? First time album, it was pretty good. It was like boom bap rap, you know, because a lot of the lyrics in there was like, you know, boom, 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 baka, baka. You know, stuff like that with the machine gun sounds and all that type of stuff. But to me, a classic album is an album that you could still listen to years later and it doesn't get outdated. But that Ready to Die album did get outdated. So maybe you have to redefine it as rather to it's a classic or not because it did get outdated. But you had good songs on here like Machine Gun Funk. Okay, now, <clears throat> when he came out, there was a lot of hype around him. I remember some of my friends telling me, hey, he's the best rapper I ever heard. And I was like, <clears throat> you know what? No, he's not. You know, by 1995, they was calling him, like, you know, some people's calling him the best rapper in the game. He was the hottest rapper in the game. And I was like, you know what? There's a lot of other artists out of New York that's better than him. You know, one was Nas. Um, I felt... Uh, Raekwon and Ghostface were better than Biggie, you know, especially when the Purple Tape came out, you know, that's a classical, that's an album I could listen to for generations, I can still listen to that album now, still do, so he came out and there was a lot of tension when he came out, a lot of guys was beefing with him, you know, and Wu-Tang was beefing with him, you know, Nas had a little secret beef with Biggie, and you know, a lot of it was competing for that New York, that crown, that king of New York, you know? And I think it came down to Jay, Biggie, and Nas, okay? But I thought, always thought, hands down, Nas was the greatest and the best rapper, not in just in general, but the best rapper to come out of New York. And I always thought Biggie was a tad bit overrated. You know, for starters, I'm going to kick, kick it up with his flow, okay? Uh, you know... His flow was, he has some catchphrases that I think a lot of people liked, but, and some, you know, a little witty punchlines here and there, but his flow and delivery wasn't on the same level as Nas, you know, even a guy like Jay-Z who came out with Reasonable Doubt, you know, his flow actually made it, you felt him a little more, you know, it hit you in the heart a little more and Biggie had no effect really on you like that other than just a hardcore effect, you know. You know, talking about guns and drugs and stuff like that. And you'd be like, you know what? I hear a lot of other rappers talk like that, but they do it better. If you listen to Mob Deep, the infamous Mob Deep, you know, that album was better than Ready to Die. You know, the infamous came out in 95. So I, I thought a lot of guys was in the shadow of Biggie. But Biggie had something to stand out because he had the charisma. You know, he had the, um, the attitude outside of rap music that people gravitated to, you know, uh, guys and females gravitated to his his big papa style attitude, you know, he had a good swag and confidence that I think no other New York rapper had, but 
nevertheless, he was still highly overrated for me. You know, when I compare him rap wise, you know, compared to another guys, I thought other guys was more creative, more lyrical, and just better. You know, a lot of Biggie's rhymes were, you know, especially from his first album was boom back. You know, it was like very predictable. You know what was going to you know what was going to come next. You know, only thing that stood out was some of his punchlines. And then he came out with his second sophomore album, okay? A double CD and that album was just 100% garbage to me. You know, I thought it was highly overrated. I remember some uh some of Biggie's biggest fans said the album was watered down and it was they just bought it because he passed away and they were showing paying homage to him, but they thought the album was trash, you know, and they like one or two songs off the album. And I said, you know what? He had two albums. So how could this guy be the greatest hip hop artist of all time with just two albums? And one is not even greatly appreciated by people because they thought it was kind of trash. And then you had one album that's a book that's a classic to some people, but not a classic to all. You know, it's a half and half one of those type of albums that people consider a classic. Not everybody was looking at the album and thought it was a classic. Now his best body of work was Ready to Die. You know. And if I think I think if he was still around and he was still making more albums, I think he would have went into a path of more commercialism and a lot of the music would have just been just flat out corny. Like more money, more problems. You know, all these songs, these shiny suit songs with P. Diddy, I thought they were corny. You know, I thought there was a lot of New York artists that's still giving you that gutter hip hop and telling you a story, you know, telling you how they felt, you know, and what was going on around them. They weren't pitting on this little fantasy gimmick and image that Biggie was displaying. But I digress, you know, I'm pretty sure if he had some battles with um, some of these New York artists, because it was escalating to that, you know, he would probably had a little beef with Nas. They went back and forth. I think Nas would have defeated him. You know, I even think Jay-Z would have been capable of making a better song, a distant song than uh, Biggie, you know, and that's that, you know, Biggie wasn't, he was the type of dude to battle you in the streets, but when it was coming, coming to wax battling guys, it was like, like yeah, you know, but for me, Biggie was highly overrated, far from the GOAT and far from a top five best rapper to me. You could plug them somewhere in between 10 to 15. And that's just being generous. Capital P out. Hip hop all day, every day. Peace.